Hello and welcome to Life Work with Maya. If you're a long-time listener of the show, you'll have noticed this isn't Maya's voice. My name is Urjan and I'm the producer of the show. And while Maya takes a well-deserved rest and reset away from the podcast, and we'll be back in the near future with exciting new content, I've been scheduling content from the archive in the past few seasons. Today's episode is from April this year, a time in which I feel the economy was a lot more in the air. And as we approach, especially in my industry around content and advertising, the performance quarters of the year, Q3, Q4, a lot more opportunities are showing up. And so for those of you who are looking to change role or really take advantage of the opportunities that are coming up towards the back end of the year, I feel that this episode is perfect for you. I hope you enjoy. This is Life Work with Maya, where we talk about success on your terms and tune in to work and lives that feel spacious, abundant, and aligned with who we truly are. So we are back this week with another short, and I'm answering another question from Instagram. Uh, this one is with exclamation marks, how to know when to chase recruiters, exclamation mark. And I followed up to get a bit more detail. Any more specifics? Have they just gone cold? And the response was, they are responding, but the urgency is gone. Unlike the first few communications when I believe they needed my CV ASAP. Um, and the questioner goes on with a little bit more detail there, which I don't think we're going to need for this episode. Um, But there's a few things I want us to think about. The first is that big picture of when we are really highly invested in a specific opportunity and how this impacts the process. That nervous energy, it will show up. Whether it means that you actually overthink your follow-ups and you are not as regular and consistent because you're worried, you're constantly worried about whether you might upset someone. Whereas if you have built up a systematic series of other opportunities of which this is one, you're going to feel far more comfortable regularly checking in, uh, but not being overly worried or sensitive about how this may come across. If you haven't seen my masterclass, definitely go and have a look at that because I specifically go through there this wheel where we are building over time a systematic approach to building up our relationships on our opportunities. I don't mind whether they are internal or external opportunities. I have clients coming to me both seeking internal promotion and external promotions. This wheel works either way because what we're doing is we are systematically building up your influence, your understanding of your personal style, then your relationships then your internal and external stakeholder mapping, then slowly building that stuff up and the opportunity then can come where it comes. We can't magic, you know, I can't predict where they're going to come from, but what we can do is make you as best prepared as possible when they do. One of the best ways of being prepared is having more than one opportunity on the go. This increases your negotiation power. I talk about this a lot over on YouTube, so definitely go and have a look at some of those videos um, that I've done there. So that's the bigger picture is, can you cultivate a few more opportunities so that we are not ad hoc, we're not just going from when we get that big opportunity landing on our laps and we then, you know, they say jump and we say how high. We're a bit more in control of the situation. And this is what I do in my coaching program. We systemize this process so that we are not at the mercy of the vagaries of organizations who they are going to have different timescales. They're going to have... They're going to have external events impacting them. Uh, We've all been there. Uh, Even as a coach, sometimes I will be asked to rapidly provide all of my details and then suddenly uh, I won't hear anything for quite a while. Um, So this is very normal business behavior, I guess. And if we want to be in in the game, then we're going to be continuously firing out various things that put us in the game and just acknowledging the way these timeframes roll out. So definitely think about how systematic your approach is right now, or are you sort of putting all your eggs into that one basket and that's just making the whole process more anxious for you. Second bit is a more general one about chasing and follow up because we all need to be able to do this, especially I'm sure many of us have found ourselves in conversations with those that might feel that little bit more slippery. Like once this conversation ends, we're not really sure when we're going to hear from them, when we're going to get the follow up. Right. And so the time for follow up, just like much of my coaching and perspective shifting, the time for follow up is not in the moment of the follow up. It's in the way that you set the follow up up before. 
Um, and I recently had a client who she needed some information um, from somebody else. That other person, it wasn't particularly in their interest to give this information. Um, and so obviously that person was sitting on it because it wasn't, you know, part high on their priority list. So what do you do in this kind of situation? What we worked on with my client was saying, actually, why don't you just put something like a five, 10 minute catch up in the diary in say 10 days time. And there's nothing like the forcing effect of knowing the focusing effect of knowing that you're going to have a conversation with someone for you to just take those few actions, which otherwise are just sitting there like many other things on your list. It just nudges it up to the top. We've all been there. I've done this. I've known that before I get a call, there's a little bit of a flurry of activity that I do just to get things all lined up. And that's what we want to create. We want to create that five, 10 minute call, which gives a bit of focusing activity. And also if they're having issues with being able to follow up, they can just share them with us on the call itself. Many people have a high degree of external accountability, which means that left to their to-do list on their own, they could get distracted and pulled in many directions, wherever the loudest voice is. Um, If they have something in the diary, then they're more likely to do the things around it uh, to make it happen. So that's the kind of the art of follow-up and chasing. It happens during that conversation. It's a really important part of that conversation. Even for myself, when I am having discovery calls or when I'm having chemistry calls, I at the end of the conversation, we talk about how we're going to reconnect. There's no point leaving it in limbo and hanging because that doesn't serve anybody. And again, because I am coaching many, many people, having many of these calls, I am not sort of, when I ask for that follow-up and try and figure out how we're going to do it, I'm not sort of doing it from a place of need or desperation. I'm just systemizing it. I'm saying, okay, so would you like me to follow up at this point? Or is it like, they will often volunteer to me that they have a couple of time timing things and that they would like to follow up at this point. So it's just, it's just baked in to the conversation. So that's something else to think about is when you are having the interaction, actually planting the seed. Okay, well, how about, I look forward to hearing from you. How about if I haven't heard anything, I'm going to check in with you in a fortnight or in a month's time. Really simple, really easy, but it just takes that uncertainty out of, you know, off the plate for you because you know that you've kind of given yourself some permission to follow up uh, in the future. So that's the second part. Now, the final bit of specifically chasing with the recruiters, I've kind of talked around it already. It's just recognizing this mix of, on one hand, businesses do move at you know different paces. Sometimes they have an urgent need for something. The economy changes. Um, and so with a spe- specifically with recruiters, it's about understanding the individual recruiter, understanding what their style is, and preferably just ask them, how do you best like um, me to stay on top of this? Would you like me to check in on a weekly basis? Um, if it does kind of slow down, I've noticed sometimes that can happen. What's the best way for us to stay in touch about this? Uh, and really kind of make it an individualized process. Don't don't see them necessarily as the recruiter, but see them as individuals who are each going to have their own follow-up styles. And they're also going to have a limited degree of control over this because they are also part of that chasing chain as well. And so understanding, you know, that where they sit in the process. And I guess that leads me to the final sort of nugget, which is that let's say you have had many rounds of discussion with an organization. You've actually built up those um relationships as part of the interview process. Don't forget to spend a little bit on time uh, of time on LinkedIn, uh, connecting with, engaging with, um, doing whatever you can to remind the uh, individuals that you've already come into contact with uh, that you exist. And that doesn't mean specifically asking them about the opportunity. It could be other things. It could be following up with them. It could be sharing something that could be of interest to them. Whichever way, whichever hook, this is again something that I get into into in a lot of detail with my coaching clients. What are those hooks? What can we do here? Where is there some low-hanging fruit uh, to allow the relationship to keep developing um, and not kind of be in a state of stagnant limbo while you wait for everything else to line up and everything else to fall into place. So that would be the final tip. I hope you found that helpful. I look forward to hearing if you're able to put this into practice and send me your questions so that I can answer them on here. uh, And I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye-bye.
Thank you for listening to Life Work with Maya. If you've got to this point, I'm guessing you found it valuable. So do share the link with somebody else who can benefit. In an age of materialism and us trying to stay on top of clutter, what could be nicer than to send a non-clutter digital link to somebody and say, I listened to this and I thought you might love it. What a great way to show your care and consideration for them. If you haven't left a review, now is the time and make sure that you are subscribed on Spotify or your following along on Apple Podcasts. And if you really want to help the show grow, then do share the link on IG stories, Instagram stories, or reshare or discuss your thoughts with my LinkedIn posts. You can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Do feel free to send me messages there. I love having dialogue with my listeners um, and the links to those handles are in the show notes. Thanks for listening and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye-bye.